Today, I'm gonna to teach you about what's known as the Lucas polynomials, and we're gonna use these polynomials to prove a fact about the Fibonacci numbers. So let's get started with, a with some background on the Fibonacci numbers. So what are the Fibonacci numbers? The zeroth Fibonacci number is zero. The first Fibonacci number is one. And then for n greater than or equal to two, the nth Fibonacci is equal to the n minus first plus the n minus second. Okay, so let's write out some of the terms. So it's zero, one, and then you add them together, you get one. You add these two together to get two. Add them together, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, and let's stop at 55. Okay, and so this is the zeroth, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Why am I labeling these? I wanna show you something that's pretty neat, and this is what we're gonna prove. So notice, okay, this is kind of obvious that the second Fibonacci number divides all of the even index Fibonacci. Well, one divides everything, so boring. The third Fibonacci number, two, divides all of the numbers that are divisible by three, the in, whose indexes are divisible by three. So the sixth Fibonacci number is divisible by two. The ninth Fibonacci number is also divisible by two. Okay, maybe it's a coincidence. The, four, the eighth Fibonacci number, which is 21, is divisible by the fourth Fibonacci number because eight is divisible by four. The 10th Fibonacci is divisible by the fifth, right? 55 is divis divisible by five because 10 is divisible by five. All right, we'll prove that eventually. Let's look at another sequence. I call this the G sequence. G0 is going to be one. G1 will be, oh, sorry, G0 is zero, G1 is one, and Gn will be two times Gn minus one plus three Gn minus two. So I'm gonna write out the first few terms, the first, let's say 10 terms again in this G sequence, and we're gonna see if the same property holds. All right, so here are the first 10 terms in this G sequence. And again, we, we're gonna check, well, two divides four, six, eight, and 10, and you can see that this second G number divides the fourth, the sixth, the eighth, and the 10th G numbers. The third G number is seven, and that divides 182. It also divides 49, 21. And the fifth G number is 61, it divides the 10th G number. Okay, so something is going on here with this type of recursion. And so to generalize these types of recursions, we're gonna use what's known as the Lucas polynomials. So let me define those now. We use the notation bracket, curly bracket n to be the Lucas polynomial. So curly bracket zero is going to be zero. Curly bracket one is equal to one. And then for n greater than or equal to two, we have curly bracket n is equal to x, curly bracket n minus one, plus y, curly bracket n minus two. Okay, and so let me write out a, the first few of these polynomials. The first one is zero, the next one is one. Okay, how do we get the next one? It's x times the previous, so x times this, plus y times two ago, so y times zero, which is x. What about the third one? It's x times the previous, x squared, plus y times two previous, so plus y. All right, what about the next one? It's x times the previous, so that's x to the third plus xy, plus another copy of xy, so x to the third plus two xy. All right, and you should work these out on your own, but let me write out the, first, the next few. I have them worked out on paper. X to the fourth plus three, x squared y plus y squared. And then let's look at one more, uh, which is x to the fifth plus four x to the third y plus three x y squared. Okay, so this is the zeroth, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Okay, and we could check. At the second 
Lucas polynomial is just x. So does that, does that divide all of the even index Lucas polynomials? Well, this we could factor out an x, and here we could also factor out an x. So it seems like it does. Okay, what about this? The third Lucas polynomial is x squared plus y. Does that go into here? Well, let's fact, we could factor this. Well, we know it has a factor of x. It factors to x times x squared plus y times x squared plus 3y. So yeah, the third Lucas polynomial divides the sixth Lucas polynomial. So let's write down a conjecture, and then we're going to try to prove it. So our conjecture, now if, you don't, if you're not familiar with that term, it's like a, it's what our idea is. It's what we want to turn into a theorem, but we're not, we haven't proved it yet. So our conjecture is if m divides n, then the nth Lucas polynomial divides the nth Lucas polynomial. OK, and why do we want to show this? I, said, I thought we were talking about Fibonacci. Well, if we sub in x equals 1 and y equals 1, what do we get? We get Fibonacci. Right? It's the same exact recursion. It would be the sum of the two previous terms with the same initial conditions. So subbing in x equals 1 and y equals 1, you could check will give us the Fibonacci sequence. And what's neat is we could sub in any values we want. So if we subbed in x equals 2 and y equals 3, we would get that g sequence that we listed here. And you could really sub in whatever values you want. So like, you could plug in like x equals 69 and y equals 69, and you would get like a really nice sequence. OK, and so how are we going to prove this? Well, we need a way to express bracket n without this uh, recursion. Right, kind of like with the Fibonacci numbers, there's a way to have a formula that involves the golden ratio. We want a way that no matter what value of n we plug in, we could you know, figure out um, the value of bracket n without generating all of the terms before it. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to look at tilings of, we're going to have n minus 1 squares. And we're going to tile them with either monominoes or dominoes. Okay, and we're going to give monominoes the value of x and, mono, uh, and dominoes the value of y. And it turns out, and you could prove this using induction, that bracket n is equal to the sum, we'll call this tiling t, so all t. So the sum over all tilings of n minus 1 boxes of the weight, and so these x and y will be the weights, of the weights of t. OK, you don't believe me. Let's write out bracket 6. OK, so we said that bracket 6 is equal to x to the fifth plus 4x to the third y plus 3xy squared. Well, let's look at all possible Let's look at all possible tilings of five squares. And uh, if we read off the coefficients, that's going to tell us how many tilings there should be. So there should be eight. So let me. So let's see if we could find them all. And there should be exactly eight. So we could have all monominoes. And that's going to correspond to x five times, x to the fifth. Good. We could have three monominoes and end with a domino. We could have the domino in this location. We could have the domino here, or we could start with a domino. So there's four ways to have exactly one domino, which is why the coefficient of x to the third y is four. Right? These, in each of these cases, we have three monominoes and one domino. So that's x to the third y in the four different ways. And then what about x, y squared? So that's one monomino and two dominoes. We could start with a monomino. 
We could have it in the middle or we could have it in, at the end. Okay, so this here is what's known as a combinatorial interpretation for the expansion of, this, of the sixth Lucas polynomial. So this gives us a way to uh, express these Lucas polynomials in terms of uh, combinatorial objects. All right, and so what we want to do is we want to partition this set of labelings such that we could always, so in each of these partitions, in each of the groups that we group them together, we can divide out by a factor of bracket m. Okay, and so in this case, in this case, we would want to uh, group them together. Let's say we want to show that if 3 divides 6, then bracket 3 divides bracket n, we would want to group them in a way such that each group is divisible by bracket 3. And so one way we could do that is we could group these two together, right? What's the weight here? Their weight would be x to the third y plus xy squared, which factors to xy times x squared plus y. And now I know I erased it, but this was exactly bracket three. If we look at the remaining weights, we have x to the fifth plus two, sorry, 3 x to the third y plus 2 x y squared. And this also factors to x squared plus y times x to the third plus 2 x y. Okay, and so Bracket 6 is equal to the sum of both of these polynomials, each of them divisible by bracket 3, so we could conclude that bracket 6 is also divisible by bracket 3. That's kind of the big idea here. Okay, so I encourage you to try to prove this theorem on your own. Um, it's pretty tricky, so I expect, like, if you're in college and watching this and have taken combinatorics, maybe you could do it, but uh, those of you who are a little bit younger, don't worry if you don't have the techniques yet to prove this. I'll show you how to do it now. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all labelings of n minus one squares. So here we have n minus one squares. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what happens at this mth, so this would be like the first, second, the mth vertical line here. So there's two possibilities. It's either the case, it's either the case that a domino does not cross this line, and in that case, there's m minus one boxes to the left, which could be tiled any way you'd like. So that's bracket m. And then we don't really care what happens to the right. But the other option is, and I'll draw it up here because it's going to be the little bit more interesting case, is we have a domino that goes across this mth vertical line. Okay, and in that case, it's not immediately obvious that we could factor out a bracket m. So what are we going to do? We're going to look at the the 2m vertical line, okay? And again, there's two cases. Okay, in this, and I'll maybe draw it a little bit to the right so we could, so we could see what's going on. In one case, a domino does not cross that line, so we're gonna have a bracket m you know, any tiling we'd like of m minus one dominoes could go right here. And in the other case, well, it's just like the one before. We have a domino crossing this 2m line. Okay, and we could continue this. 3m, we'll have the same two cases. 
And each time, some of them will be able to factor out that bracket M, and some of them will, will, we won't be able to. And this will bring us down to the last case, right? And so in this case, we're going to have at location M, there's a domino. At location 2M, there's a domino. All the way through to lo location N minus M, there's a domino. But what's remaining, and you're going to have to work through the details. I know I'm going a little bit quick. What's remaining is M minus 1 boxes. And so that's bracket M. So in each of these cases, you know, one case it's easy to show you could factor out a bracket M, the other case it's hard. But in this last case, what's remaining on the right is a bracket M. So we could factor it out. Okay, and so what do we show? Each of these partitions, each of the groups in the partition has a factor of, if you look at their weights, has a factor of bracket M in it. So that tells us that bracket M divides bracket N. And so when do we use the M divides N? It's this part here. So this is where, you know, if, uh, if M did not divide N, then we'd have the wrong number of boxes remaining. So that's when we use the fact that M divides N. Okay, so we just showed uh, if M divides N, then bracket M divides bracket N. So what do we do? We sub in x equals 1, y equals 1. And we have that if m divides n, then the mth Fibonacci divides the nth Fibonacci, just as we desired. So we didn't even have to use any of the golden ratio stuff to prove this. We did it strictly combinatorially. And so this is an example where sometimes it's useful to make the question a little bit harder dealing with polynomials uh, so you could prove a result that doesn't have um, polynomials. So let me know.